So I start again. Hi, everyone. And this is my project, Python Power Electronics. It's an open source circuit simulator written completely in Python. So a background, this is a free and open source circuit simulator in an engineering field with very few affordable options. Almost every circuit simulator has a license that costs you several thousand dollars. This is focused particularly towards large systems. There are two ways you can simulate systems. You can look at the micro level, that is you simulate your mobile phone. Or you look at systems which are on the macro level, like you simulate a wind farm, you simulate the Ontario power system. And you can find this on these sites. I have my own website, pythonpowerelectronics.com. I have a blog at Blogspot. And I have my own Facebook page. And you can also email me at pythonpowerelectronics.gmail.com. And this is my second talk. This project has been ongoing for now almost four years, started in December 2012. The blog goes all the way up till then. The rest are pretty new. So the simulator doesn't have a graphical user interface. It is just a bunch of Python files, which is what the simulator is. It uses a whole set of whole framework of other packages in order to get it to work. For example, if you want to design your circuit, you need to use spreadsheets. If you want to update your parameters, you need to use spreadsheets. If you want to include control code, it is with Python code. And finally, when you want to plot data, the output data from the simulator is written in a data file. You can plot it with GNUplot or matplotlib. I'm trying to build in some more interfaces, like you can plot using spreadsheets or something else. This is how you design a circuit in this simulator. The circuit above is what is called as an inverter. It's a voltage source, some semiconductor devices, MOSFETs, diodes. This exact circuit you can, des you can design as a spreadsheet. This is about as graphical as it gets. You don't actually have to design and define netless. You just draw it. But the best part is you save it as a .csv file, and you get a text file. So it's much easier to handle with Python rather than actually dealing with the graphical user interface. Once you enter this circuit schematic, the simulator automatically detects each and every circuit component and creates a parameter spreadsheet. This is a parameter spreadsheet. It'll put up all the components along with identifiers, the name, the position, and default parameters. All the user has to do, change the default parameters to what they want it to be, and save it back. Now, these parameters keep on changing because I keep adding newer and newer elements. But typically, all you need to do is remember that when you change a circuit, you might have to rechange some of these spreadsheets. Control code. This is probably the most important part, one of the reasons why I actually came up with this thing. The reason is, one of the reasons for simulating systems is you want to actually simulate how controls work before you actually build a hardware. That means this has to mimic the hardware setup as closely as possible. Control code allows you to define inputs. An input could be a measured quantity from a circuit, like the current, the voltage. It could be another, it should, could be an input from another control code. So you can have you can break your control into blocks and have them connected together. You can define outputs. The outputs can actually go to elements and control them. It can turn off a switch, turn on a switch. They could also go to other control files. Or you can just write it to a data file and just measure it. This is good if you want to debug control. The last is time events. In a, hard, in a power electronics circuit, usually nowadays you use a digital controller. You use a microcontroller, you use an an Arduino board and all kinds of things. One of the most important things is you are now doing it discreetly, which means your control happens at discrete time events. And you want to know how your circuit behaves when you have these control event control actions happening discreetly. This circuit simulator allows you to schedule with precision every time instant in the control code. For example, you can have a control, you can have a time resolution 100 nanoseconds or every 50 nanoseconds or 500 milliseconds, whatever you want. This gives you, and I'll show you later with an example, how you can simulate a circuit exactly the way it would be in hardware. The progress so far, on my site, I have 12 sample circuits which I've simulated. You can check out their reports on them. I have written a few short papers on the circuit simulator. You can find them on the site. 
There are so far 17 versions of the software. It's still in progress. I keep picking up bugs every now and then. I release another version. Most importantly, I'm writing a book on the circuit simulator. Hopefully, this should be ready by February 2007. Right now, a first draft is ready. You can, pick, you can read the table of contents from my site. And just give you one example of what, what I can do with the circuit simulator so far. This is what is called as a smart grid. And a smart grid means you have multiple inverters, which actually are connected together to form a system. These multiple inverters can be renewable energy sources, solar, wind, whatever you want. They can have storage devices, batteries. And finally, you have loads. The idea is you want to check out how this system would behave. Every inverter has its own set of dedicated code, because every inverter typically is a little box with its own dedicated controller. This runs for a time window of two seconds at a simulation time step of 100 nanoseconds. It runs for 46 hours, generates 300 megabytes of data. And using this simulation, I am able to control exactly the control parameters in order to achieve power sharing in this circuit. Just give you a few examples. These are the currents that two inverters are supplying. The idea is you want to share power equally. As you can see, at, at 0.4 seconds, another inverter is switched on. And very soon, these two currents merge, which means they are actually sharing power equally. And then finally, I'll give you this example. This is the power which is actually supplied by the two inverters. You'll see at different points of time that uh, load changes. Because the load changes, the power demand changes. But if you see the two inverters share power equally. The reason I can do this is because the control gains are so designed so that these two controllers actually merge together at all times. And that's pretty much what I have. I have my own Facebook page if you want to follow it. That's where I put up most of my uh, updates. The important thing is uh, this, this simulator is what I would say one of the is, is a part of the scientific community projects. For example, I don't know if you know about Scilab and other parts. One of the reasons for using Python was because Python is being used by the scientific community. You have a lot of other projects, such as NumPy and other things, which have been projected before. The idea is if all these could be combined together, you could have something which is the free and open source equivalent of MATLAB. And that's pretty much where I'm trying to go to. The idea here is, so far, just handle the power electronics concept, because that's what I am. I've been doing power electronics for the past 12 years. But soon, I would like to bring in other aspects to it. Control systems, signal processing, maybe even things like neural networks and other stuff. So I would say, please do follow this project. And maybe I'll keep posting something that you might be interesting later. That's all for me. Thank you. <laughs>